All right, so in this segment, I want to kind of go through a little bit beyond the basics, I guess what I'm going to call it, uh, as far as walls go. So you're pretty familiar with the basic wall, how to make a basic wall, um, <clears throat> how to assign layers and thicknesses and, and all that stuff. Um, and what I want to go into here is kind of taking that to the next level and creating several basic walls, stacking them to create what Revit refers to as a stacked wall. So <clears throat> in addition to creating a few basic walls um, to create our stacked wall, I also in the process want to go over um, sweeps and reveals and also assigning some different material qualities to um, the same layer within a wall. So that's kind of what we've got planned. And what I've got here is I've got um, two walls here is the wall with the exterior facing the viewer, and that's the same wall with the interior view beyond. So this is um, one wall type, a uh, split face brick sill. This is a second basic wall, again exterior, interior, beyond, and this is um, stone reveals, which is what you're seeing here. And the third basic wall is a um, brick sweep. So I've got a soldier course in my basic wall um, with a sweep. So in other words, what I've got is a stacked wall. This is the section through my stacked wall, which my stacked wall is comprised of that split face basic wall and my stone reveal basic wall and finally the brick sweep basic wall. So you can see here's my brick sweep from my basic wall. That's going to be that soldier course that we were looking at a minute ago. All these uh, reveals or cut-ins to the brick which I've got um, a stone material applied. It could be any other material. It, the reveal is the kind of the, what I'm after. Um, the material is a secondary deal. Um, <clears throat> and then in my base wall I've got split face block with a brick soldier course seal on it. Um, also on the interior of my split base wall I've did a little bit of a change up so I've got sheetrock all the way up this wall but here at the base I want to go with like a wood paneling and also I'm going to use sweeps to add a chair rail and some baseboards so that's kind of what we're that's where we're headed with this. Um, so here's our finished floor um, the bottom of our sill is going to sit on modular block height. So in other words, I've got four CME blocks, um, eight inches tall piece, so 32 inches on top of that, my brick sill is going to sit. Um, and then the top of the wall, just in this example, it could be anything, but if it's in this case, it's nine feet. And I also wanted to show where these walls are switching. So if I go back to uh, my south elevation view, there's my finished floor, there's my brick sill, this is the transition between the split face wall and the stone reveal wall. Now I dragged the top of this wall higher than the transition just to show you that in this wall I've actually got the gypsum and the paneling set up in the same wall so if this continued it would be sheetrock from this point all the way up. But <clears throat> In the stone reveal wall and the brick sweep wall, I'm just using the sheetrock because I don't need that paneling anywhere up here. So we're going to go into how to do that. So how did I do that? And just to kind of, again, just show you the setup where we're headed with that. I've got it all set up for you. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so... The first thing I want to do is get rid of everything <clears throat> that we've got and start from scratch. So I've already prefaced that by um, <clears throat> renaming all these walls with an X prefix. So those were all the existing ones that we started with. I'm going to make everything generic 8 inch wall. So we're starting from complete scratch in everything. So south view, everything all scratched out. So the first thing I want to do is grab these two, edit type, and I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to say um, A just to get it to the top of the list. Um, split face, brick, 
seal. All right. Got a new type. Edit. And I'm going to change this from 8 to 7 and 5 eighths. And I'm going to put my CMU block in there. CMU. Nope, that's not the CMU I want. Alright. So I've got <coughs> CMU. And I'm going to start adding these levels in. The first one's going to take a little bit of time because i got to put everything in there. So I need uh, rigid insulation. I'm going to need a vapor barrier. I'm going to need uh, I sent vapor barrier and then I put the air in, so let's go ahead and get that vapor barrier in there. Jumping ahead of myself. And then, of course, I need the break, or a split face, excuse me. So that takes care of the exterior side. And a little bit of housekeeping. Also need some. There it is. Here's my insulation. A little bit out of order. So this is going to be thermal. It's going to be a membrane. This is going to be thermal. And this is going to be a finish. And we'll get to thicknesses here in a minute. I need a metal fern. Could be wood. It's going to give me something to attach my sheetrock to without attaching it directly to the concrete. And the last thing I need is that sheetrock. Which we all call gypsy board. This is going to be a finish. This is going to be a substrate. So we've got all our layers in there. Now we just need to get to set heights. So we're going to call this 7 eighths. I'm going to use a half inch sheetrock. Um, the insulation, we're going to go with an inch. The membrane layer is going to be zero. The air, I like to do after the brick. That way I can do my math in my head. So <clears throat> CMU split face is 3 and 5 eighths. I've got four and five eighths, and I want the face of that to be six inches off the block. So I need uh, one and three eighths, and that should do it. So I've got all my layers laid out the way I need them to be. So um, the first thing I'm going to jump on is that sill. So I'm going to hit sweep add and typically it's already loaded in there so I'm going to go ahead and grab that seal precast um, <clears throat> all the things we're going to need is loaded in just because we're using a file that's already got it in there but if you had to load you just hit load profile profiles and then there's a slew of samples in there for you to use um, you can always make one from scratch if you have to but in this case that's how you load everything we need is going to be already loaded I don't need any of that. Let's say seal precast. Um, I know it says seal precast, but I'm actually going to go with a soldier course brick on my seal. And this distance is going to be the distance from wherever. So in this case, I want the distance from the base. And I'm going to set that to. I want the sill at four blocks off of the ground. So that's going to be four times eight, it's 32 inches. Two foot eight. So we've got two foot eight off the base. 
hit apply and there it is so <clears throat> I also have sweeps that I'm using for the base and the chair rail on the interior so <clears throat> because I've set that to exterior you can see my seals on the exterior side um, alternatively if you need something on the interior wall same process load my base set my material to I'm just going to use cherry um, the base is going to be right on the ground so I don't need to set a distance from the base but I do need to set this side to interior hit apply there it is and I also need a chair rail so let's go ahead and do that too um, I use the casing profile for the chair rail I'm going to use the same material for the wood and the logic behind this is I want the top of the chair rail at 34 inches so if I say 34 inches that's going to say 2 foot 10 now my casing is four and a half inches tall so I'm going to deduct that because it's inserting it based on the top so if I deduct the height I'll get it where I need it to be so um, two foot five and a half and I need it on the interior and hit apply and there it is so I've got a sweep for the brick sill I've got a sweep for the chair rail and a sweep for the base I'm okay and I'm moving forward now <clears throat> one other thing I want to do before I get out of this wall is I want wood paneling behind that chair rail in the base and I want gypsum everything above that so what I'm gonna have to do is add in a new layer so that I can assign a material to it so we're gonna say finish I'm gonna use that same cherry wood and I'm not gonna worry about a thickness on this right now what I'm gonna do is each one of these layers can be split into regions so this sheetrock layer I can split that vertically. You can also split them, <clears throat> or excuse me, I'm going to split it horizontally, and you can also split them vertically. But I'm going to go ahead and split the sheetrock layer right there at the top of that chair rail. Once I do that, I can hit assign layers, select the layer that I want to assign, and select the region I want to assign it to. And you can see now I have wood paneling below the sheetrock behind the <clears throat> wood trim um, and you can always go in here and move this around if you don't get it just right but um, I got it nailed it so I'm gonna leave it alone so now I've got my split base block with a brick sill I've got wood paneling back there behind my wood trim and I've got three sweeps in this wall so I'm gonna run with that hit OK uh, hit OK and that should update so there it is now onto the midsection I'm gonna grab both of these edit type and I'm actually gonna start with the split face that I just created um, just to make things a little bit quicker um, <clears throat> so rename it a stone reveal and jump right back into the editor and edit this assembly so um, the first thing is I'm switching the exterior face from the split face to a common brick width is going to remain the same all these values should remain the same um, <clears throat> I don't need this cherry so I'm going to scratch that um, and before I can do that I need to merge these regions back together so if I take and merge the gypsum down you'll see it'll zero out the cherry finish and I can delete it now so that's gone <clears throat> now I need to modify these sweeps because I don't need any of those so jump into the sweeps and just start plucking those out one at a time okay they're gone so now um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and put the reveals in for the stone facing on the exterior and it works pretty much the same as sweeps we just did so we're gonna jump into the reveals again if it wasn't already loaded I would just go load it just like I did in the sweeps but in this case since I've already got them in this file they're gonna be there um, 
the first one I'm going to put in is a one brick course reveal. Um, my first one, what I'm trying to do is have um, three bricks, which is going to be a modular unit, let's say eight inches. And then I want my first reveal at the top of that eight inch gap. So <clears throat> I'm going to go eight inches from the base, apply, and you can see it's going to show you what it's cutting from. So this is a brick size. What's blue here is going to cut out of this brick basing layer of the wall. So I've got my first one in there. Um, you can duplicate or you can add. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to set um, another one brick course reveal at one foot four. Now if I've already gone ahead and figured out all the heights on these so there's a little bit less math involved but it's it's one of those things that you're going to have to work out especially with brick and stone anything that's got a um, modular units of material so there's my second one here um, I'm going to add a third reveal in this case I want a three brick height or three coursings of brick reveal and I want it to set right on top of the one below it so I'm going to say 1 foot 6 and 5 eighths from the base, exterior side, and if I hit apply, it's going to stack it right on top of the other one. But what I actually want to do in this case is inset that even farther than the default. So I might want to inset that, let's say, um, an inch. If I give it a positive value, it's going to go towards the center line of the wall. If I give it a negative value, it's going to do just the opposite. So. In this case, I actually do want the positive value. I'm going to go with that. And you can see I've got two single course reveals and a three course reveal stacked on top of that. And I'm just going to keep plugging along here. And another one course reveal at two foot two and five eighths. Apply. And I'm just kind of mirroring that up the wall. So I'm going to have one more. Duplicate. Set that height to 2 foot 10 and 5 eighths. Hit apply. And there we go. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 reveals in this wall. Hit OK. And the same thing I did for the wall paneling on the interior on the first wall, I'm going to do that same routine with the exterior facing on um, the stone reveal because what I want is I want brick everywhere that the wall is full thickness. Everywhere I put a reveal I'm going to switch it to stone. Now that could be a different brick material, it could be a very various materials. Uh, in this case I'm just going to use stone just to kind of shake things up a bit and make it a little bit different as far as visual goes. So again I'm going to insert a new layer, give it a finish, give it a material and not worry about the thickness right now. Remember I'm going to come in here and split these regions. I want to split this there. Get as close as I can here. Oh, didn't take. Let's try it again. Now some of these are going to fall in line perfectly and some of them are just not. It's just the way it's going to be. But zoomed out to where you can notice that, you won't. So I'm not even going to worry about it. And then I'm going to grab that stone, assign layer, and I'm going to assign the stone to that section. This section in this section and that's going to be a wrap on that now if I want to get in there and really tweak where these are I can you can modify and move those around but I, I'm not really that worried about it um, at the scale you're going to be looking at that and seeing that it's not going to really make a huge difference um, that little sixteenth of whatever measurement that was so I'm going to hit OK uh, OK to get out of this menu and you'll see it update and there we go and the last thing we're going to do, um, really we've already covered the sweep, but just for visual effect and kind of tie it all together, we're going to um, do this one more time. So we're going to take our stone, 
duplicate it and we're going to call it a brick sweep. I'm going to edit this. Again, I don't need any of these reveals, so they all disappear. Hit OK. Um, I don't need this stone anymore, but I'm going to have to merge all these regions to get rid of it. So I'm going to merge down, merge down, merge down, merge down, merge down. Now, <clears throat> interesting, it just so happened that when I merged this out, it got rid of the brick instead of the stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out the stone. And I'm going to add, well, hold on, let me uh, do it this way. I hear you. There we go. I'm going to add a thickness to this. So let's say 3 and 5 eighths. And then trash this one. And that should get me back where I wanted to be. Now I need to add that sweep. And in this case, instead of a <coughs> casing, a base, or a sill, I've got a soldier course. And I want to make sure my material matches what I'm intending on putting there. So I'm going to go brick, soldier course, OK. Distance from the top. Now if I hit apply, it gave me my soldier course. And I got two problems with that. One is the soldier course is on top of the wall as opposed to in the wall itself. So it's it's offset from the top, but it's offset positive, so it's above the wall. Um, the other thing is I don't want that soldier course sticking all the way out from the face of the wall. I actually want to inset a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my sweeps. And if I set this to a negative value, it's going to move that down. And that's where I want it to be. Now, <clears throat> if I offset this in, just like I did on those reveals earlier, if I give it a positive value, it's going to move away from the wall. If I give it a negative value, not two feet though, let's say two inches, it's going to move it in towards the center of the wall. I'm going to hit OK. I'm good with all the rest of that. I'm going to hit OK. Close it out. So now I've got my three walls again. Now to do the stack, the hard part in the work is in getting the base walls right. Now <clears throat> I've already mapped all the dimensions and, and sizes and everything out and that was really the work part that you didn't get to see but once you get that worked out creating the stack is actually the easy part. I say that. Let's hope it doesn't give me any fits. So I need to go system family. I need a stacked wall. Now there's the final stack that I had before. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to create a final stack. And let's say that these are all set to generic. So there's my wall. And you can see where the transitions are. So if I create my final stack and edit, all I have to do is grab the basic walls that I want to stack. And of course the base is going to be the one in the bottom. So they're going to stack vertically in order. So if I set this to a split face brick, you'll see there's my split face brick on the bottom. Now if I go to the top of the list, it's going to create <coughs> change the wall at the top of the wall. So if this was our brick sweep, you see it fills in there. And I want my stone in the middle. And there we go. Now these are some of those dimensions we got to work out and that takes a little bit of plan with, but <coughs> I've gone ahead and worked it out in the beginning. Um, before we started here, so I've, I've got two foot ten and three quarters, and basically that is the four blocks that my sill is sitting on, plus the thickness of the sill itself, and that's where I want my first transition. Now, if I set this to six feet, I'm going to get an error because it's going to cancel out this sweep up here at the top. But um, <clears throat> the height on the top is variable, and that just means that if I make this wall 20 feet tall, of the three base walls, 
this is the one that's going to grow to accommodate the difference in the height. Now if I set the stone reveal to be the variable wall, you can see how it shifts. All those reveals are based on bottom base constraints, so they stay where they are, but the height of the wall is going to be variable. The stone reveal is variable, so if I set this to 20, the stone reveal is going to make up that difference. Now if I set this back to 9, you won't be able to tell. And that's how we've got that. So there's our stacked wall. Hit OK. OK to close it out. You'll see it update. And we're back where we started.